Hi there, I'm Gareth Thomas and I'm the Senior Project Officer on the Lifequake project. Lifequake is a newly started project uh, looking into habitat restoration of uh, transition mires and quaking fens throughout Wales. The, the project is funded by EU Life and supported also by Welsh Government as well. This is approximately 5 million euros um, spread across uh, nearly five years. Uh, today we're here at Crumlin Bog to take a look around the site and uh, discuss some of the interventions we're going to be doing to hopefully improve the, the overall status of the site, making it more favourable for plants, invertebrates, species including the fenraft spider. So Crumlin Bog is uh, one of the, the main sites that we'll be looking at throughout the Lifequake project. Uh, it's where a majority of the work will take place to restore the site. There are a number of issues around Crumlin Bog from the last couple of hundred years due to man's interventions on the site. These stem from the Flandarsi oil refinery, invasive species, hydrological issues through canal construction over the years and lack of maintenance of those sites, not to mention other things including um, diffuse pollution across the site. The site here at Crumlin Bog is approximately 300 hectares in site. This includes the NNR at Crumlin itself and across the Jersey Marine a smaller area called Pantasice. The site is made up of fen, transition mire, quaking bog, all, all in an unfavourable status at this current time. Towards the sort of eastern side of the site we've got the Coy Darcy development uh, by St Modwins. This is the former Flandarcy oil refinery dating back to before World War II. This site was heavily bombed during the war. Um, at the time it was the largest refinery in the UK. Um, issues surrounding that is we now have an exploded ordnance within the bog itself. We've got potentially leaked hydrocarbons into the site as well from when the refinery was bombed. To the southwestern side of the site we've got the Tier John landfill site which is currently winding up but we still have to be very careful around that area in terms of, of pollution sources. The whole of the western leading to northern side of the bog has major issues with uh, non-native species including Japanese knotweed, Himalayan balsam, Cosmia, bamboo, to name but a few of them. Um, the biggest issue we have is the Himalayan balsam and what impact that could cause on pollinating species for our site. Um, so throughout the project we'll be looking to try and resolve some of those problems, um, some control within the reserve and, and its wider areas but also trying to engage with communities and look further afield so that we can try and prevent the problem at the source rather than constantly fighting it within the site. The site has, has got so much history around it. There's the history surrounding World War II and then we've got the canals which form a major part of the hydrological issues on the, for the site. Um, here we have the Glanawurn Canal constructed in around 1790 to bring coal down from the Glanawurn colliery. That would have been transported down to Swansea for the copper smelting. This links up with the Port Tennant Canal that ran all the way up towards Neath. Major hydrological issues surrounding those areas due to lack of maintenance over the last 40 to 50 years really and creating a majority of the problems within the site, particularly around the vegetation types that we're seeing ingressing into the site. Part of our work there to control it is, is going to be some heavy mowing on the sites using a piston bully. That's a low ground pressure machine with a, a collector on the back of it because we won't be leaving any of the biomass on the site that we harvest to degrade because that will in turn affect water quality. We want to remove that from the site, cut all of these areas back, get it nice and short, that will help promote the growth of plants like the sphagnum mosses, which are obviously really important to carbon sequestration and just the containment of carbon within the sites as well. So one of the, the big difficulties we have on the site at the moment is accessing it. Um, there are very few points within the bog itself that we can get to easily. Um, we do have access into this area which 
should be fairly straightforward um, and being mostly sort of transition mire, the ground is fairly stable. But to the eastern side of it, we have a former track from the Flandasi oil refinery which just hasn't been maintained since the refinery closed. So part of the project at the beginning is obviously creating access for ourselves so that we can carry out these works. So at the moment we're going to be looking to create a kilometre long improvement to the track from the tenant farm on the opposite side and down onto the bog so that we can reach the Glanawurm Canal to carry out work there but also to carry out hard mowing in these areas. That obviously comes at a great cost and the engineering when you're building a track on a bog even though there isn't a pre-existing one is obviously very complicated. Another problem that we currently face is um, a former pipeline across the bog as well. Thankfully our stakeholders in the project, uh, St Modwins, are assisting us in the removal of this section of pipeline. Over to the western side of the bog we have a, the area we call the balloon field, which has still to this day has a number of concrete blocks with metal eyelets in it where the local people would just run out when the air raid sirens went off. To, to raise these helium filled balloons into the air to stop low flying aircraft coming in and attacking the oil refinery. One of the big parts of the work we're going to be carrying out here to address the hydrological issues is going to be to look at connecting the Glenworm Canal once we've cleared it with the Crumlin Brook which is just out of shot here. Um, this will hopefully help to improve flow of water through the site rather than across it. Currently the problem is the water is flowing through sheets across the site um, and dispersing loads of nutrients that we don't want in the wrong places. So the hope is that by connecting the Glenwoon Canal up to the Crumlin Brook will increase the flow of water through the site, help to drain the site but also most importantly reduce the, the nutrients that uh, are getting absorbed into the bog and feeding the plants we don't want there. Part of the problem with building that ditch is the unknown, uh, an exploded ordinance that we have on the site. We know that this is a bombing run, we know there have been craters in there, so we have to engage with uh, a contractor to, to come and explore the site to work out is it safe for us to build and possibly create a route around any potential explosives within the site. I feel incredibly lucky and proud to be involved in the Lifequake project, to be part of a team where our, our long-term goal is all about habitat protection and restoration, but also with community engagement. We're going to be working with large numbers of stakeholders and communities who don't necessarily know that they've got this fantastic site on their doorstep. So hopefully we can bring more and more people together and grow to love Crumlin Bog and more and more people can explore it. And the more people that come here, then the greater the site will become.